Good evening, people of YouTube. Once again, it's Three Middle-Aged Guys. I am the Reverend. The theme here. And Grand Mouse One. And we are going to give you another uh, video in our during our Geek Week in Review. A little bit of video game discussion. Namely, Street Fighter V. It was brought to my attention just a little bit earlier this week that um, the numbers for Street Fighter V are rather disappointing. Um, on May 14th, it was known that Street Fighter V, the number of physical copies sold for Street Fighter V was at 670,000 uh, worldwide physical copies. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the caveat out there that this did not include digital copies sold on Steam and also for PS4 on, on PSN Live or PSN Network, all right? Um, this is just physical. However, this is just physical copies. Actual PS4 discs sold worldwide is at 670,000 copies. In the middle of May, it was passed up by Pokken Tournament, which was released out a full few months later. And Pokken Tournament is currently sitting at 680,000 copies physically sold worldwide, which is really, really odd considering um, the PS4 has sold over 40 million copies. <laughs> the Wii U has only sold a little bit over 13 million copies worldwide. Consoles. Yes, as far as consoles. So if you're just looking at like the ratio of console users the installed base and everything else yeah the ps4 is completely out of balance it just blows the shit out of the fucking um out of the wii u but the wii u was still able to go ahead and outsell street fighter 5 the staple fighting game the staple fighting game the staple fighting brand uh with a hopeful one off I, I don't know this is probably gonna be a one off match mashup uh you know of the Pokemon games you know using the Tekken engine for it's not even a dedicated fighting game it's more like an arena fighting game if you if you see how it's played. Mm -hmm. Um I find that very interesting. What are your thoughts, gentlemen? I don't find it interesting at all here's my reasoning. I've said it all along. It's not about systems. It's about games. Here's the thing about Street Fighter. Street Fighter has been on a decline, especially with Street Fighter 4 and their four fucking versions of it. When that happened, a lot of people was like, why am I going to get just Street Fighter 5? There's just going to be like a Turbo, an Ultra, a Super. They're going to be that much. Of Even with all the shit that Capcom announces, like, no, there's not going to be that. And everybody's like, okay. But we're still going to have to, oh, what, characters? We're still going to have to pay for those. No, you can earn them. Oh, really? Okay, we're excited. And then the game comes out, and it has modes missing. And then there's some cockamamie thing that you have to do in order to earn the fucking characters and to earn the fucking points for them. You always have to be online. You have to play online. You, there's no fucking arcade mode. And it's like, look, if you're going to come out with a game like this, don't have the Super Nintendo version of Street Fighter 2 have more fucking modes and more fucking gameplay and more fucking fun than anything that comes out in 2016. It pissed people off. When people heard about that, either they bought it and they took shit back, or they didn't buy it at all, or they have it and they don't play it like Grey Mouse. There are too many things that were wrong when the game came out. Even with all the shit they announced, People, people just sat on their thumbs and they're like, nope, I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to buy it because I already know some type of shit's going to be involved in it that's going to make me hate it. That was just said over and over and over again by even Street Fighter fans. So they didn't take their chance on it. And look at the result. Well, Green Mouse, I know you have thoughts on this. <laughs> Who, me? Nah. Um... I just checked. No, no, no. Just sit there and nod your head like you usually do. <laughs> you got online bullied. I just, <laughs> I just got, I just checked two days ago and still no arcade mode. Um, the reason why I checked was because there's a downloaded content for uh, Ibuki, a Street Fighter 3 character. Um, and I was actually happy about that. Uh, but, 
the problem with this whole thing is this, is that I think the, the bottom line, if we're going to cut the brass tax, um, what happened was Capcom wanted the game out before Evo. And they didn't care what they cut out of the game. They just wanted Evo 2016 to have Street Fighter V. Uh, to have the competition for Street Fighter V. Now, um, since, I don't know, have you, uh, Dean, have you were able to play it at all? No. 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 There's no point. I was just wondering if somebody brought it over and you were able to play. Um, but it is a fun if game. If brought it over, it wouldn't matter. He doesn't have a PS4 yet. He would bring a PlayStation 4. Um, but anyway, Look, I've had that. I had that offer, but I'm like, there's no fucking point. I don't have all the fucking characters. Well, the game, the game in itself is fun. It, the mechanics are fun. The game's fun. It's just, uh, but it's just like you had a. You're missing. You know, you're missing modes. You know, and it's it, not. Look, you 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 sold half a fucking game. If even that. For sixty dollars, yeah, and we're gonna have to wait to get the other fucking half years down the fucking road. Yeah, you're missing shit that should automatically be there. That's been on there. That's been on every fucking fighting game that's ever hit a fucking console. There's no excuse for that. As a Street Fighter fan that still plays Third Strike to this day, I will not touch Street Fighter Five until it's fucking complete. So what I'm kind of concerned about is what's this going to mean for future Capcom games, fighting games? Are there going to be? Well, actually, it's funny that you brought that up because the thing is is that obviously these sort of numbers haven't gone unnoticed by Capcom. Um, of course not. Yeah, Capcom, the Capcom CEO uh, in an interview, uh, a few uh, around that was made around May, May 14th, May 16th, and I understand we're catching up with this, but you know, this is still a poignant topic, and this is actually something that we're all pretty interested in. Uh, he actually went out of his way at an investor meeting. Um, he went out of his way, and he, he pretty much apologized for the state of Street Fighter V. The funny thing about that was that uh, a week later, oh, the name of the, the Capcom CEO, Kenzo Sujimoto, yeah, he, he admitted that Street Fighter V needed more polish. Okay. Now, a few days later, they announced in a um, uh, a public announcement, uh, basically a Q and A uh, session, that Capcom announced a new shift to prior prioritize completeness of games. <laughs> you know that should be common sense, maybe. You don't. Well, I don't know. I mean, you got these companies like Ubisoft. You got these companies like anyway. That's like saying this that become that, a plague. That's that's like saying that if I make a game, it's got to be players have got to be able to beat it, all right? Or if if um I I, I make a game and you're using a controller that you got to be able to use the right directional pad on it. Remember the Xbox One debacle in 2013? Oh yeah, anybody can play a game on your console. <laughs> <laughs> just saying okay so well, this shit this shit is so monumentally bad and it cannot be glossed over in any other fucking way that no. the CEO of the company the CEO of the company admits the fault of their tentpole flagship fucking series and then pushes out that they have to mandate and announce publicly that they are taking a brave new direction. <laughs> they don't know it's where right they're going. It's right there in front of you. Yeah. Fucking make a complete game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, the thing is, this is just a cl uh, classic example of them going and uh, trying to to listen to the minority versus the majority. They were more concerned with... You, you the, see, this is the thing. You know, they're more concerned with the competitive side of 
of the of the thing versus the people that that like the game on just on a couch uh, having a couch you know playing it so and that's what's coming you know pvp person versus person is a very it's starting to they're making I that first for a that game that you say that because probably the next wave of fighting games in the next generation are not even going to have versus mode couch you're going to have to play people online and online only versus. It's a damn shame that Street Fighter, next year, Street Fighter will be out 30 years. The first Street Fighter came out in 1987. Remember that. 30 years, and we haven't seen this type of thing with Street Fighter ever since Street Fighter 1. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, I mean, for, for them to cater towards the the uh, the competitive side of, size of Street Fighter. Well, the people that weren't alive when Street Fighter 1 came out? Cater to those people? The people that, now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being competitive in Street Fighter 5. That's what, that's what fighting games are about. But they also got to remember that a lot of people like myself just like to sit on the couch and play a versus mode with my friend or just putting it on, on uh, eight stars or 10 stars and try to beat the game on the highest difficulty just, just because I can. But that's, not, that's, not even, that's not even all of it. The game is incomplete because it's the, the character roster. You're going to announce a character roster and then, oh, we have all these others down the road that you're going to be able to unlock or buy within the range of years. So basically, instead of coming out with another sequel or whatever, whatever. There's nothing wrong. Okay, there's nothing, to me, there's nothing wrong with adding uh, extra content to expand on the game. I'm not saying that Street Fighter V was only eight characters or four characters and then everything else is DLC as garbage. But for me, for a company, I'm sorry, for a company to concentrate more on the DLC versus the core game, that's just the wrong business. I, this is my personal opinion, you know, since. I mean, I, I would think that you want to get your core game right first, then worry about expanding the game in the future and not the other way around. Uh, you know, it's like... It's like remember what happened game. with Street Fighter... Remember what happened with Street Fighter 4? The first Street Fighter 4 was broken. Then when they came out with Super Street Fighter 4, they tried to tweak it up, and it was still broken. Arcade mode, arcade edition was like, okay, this is the last straw, Capcom. No. Then they came out with Ultra, and it's like, you couldn't do all of this the first time around. We had to pay all this and shove out all this fucking money in order to get the Ultra game that was well, not even 100% right. Yeah. Well, the problem with that is for Street Fighter V just a merely couple of years later. See, the problem well, with that is, is this, is that it kind of makes the, the, the company think that it's just cash grabs. You're going to throw out a shitty game and then just, you know, keep throwing Because that's $60 a game. So you're talking about $60, 60 times four. <laughs> you can get the right game. And, and I'm not paying $240 at least. I'm not doing that. And do you think, I mean, do, do you think that, do you think that, uh, that questions are not asked, you know, about the company. Uh, you think they're doing that shit on purpose? Uh, I, that comes in the question. Go ahead. Hold on here. Hold on here. Okay. Now uh, I'm going. I'm only going to defend Street Fighter Four up until this particular point, and that particular point is that it actually had fucking endings. It actually had <laughs> arcade mode. It actually had a fucking story mode. And that when you went into online, there were actual fucking lobbies, and that you could actually set up a uh, set up customized matches and shit like that. As far as being complete <laughs> in comparison to Street Fighter Five, Vanilla Street Fighter Four was yeah. worth twice as much mm -hmm. as Street Fighter Five. <laughs> okay, now I am not going to defend the on disc DLC, which is there. Hmm. Not just suits, but fucking characters, okay? I'm not going to defend that shit, all right? I'm not going to defend releasing an updated version for it within within less than a year. 
okay, and asking for another 30 fucking bucks because they did that too, all right? And part of what Capcom said their initiative was as far as putting together Street Fighter V and having the unlockable characters and having the unlockable extras and everything else was to make good because of what they did with Street Fighter IV. But you forgot something, Capcom. If you're going to have sex with me, let me nut, okay? <laughs> no! That's if they, that's if that if you wanted they wanted you to be pleasured. That's not what this is. They're not it's, fucking you that way. They're fucking no, you here, that here's, way. here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. What they did was that and this will segue into the second part of our conversation. All right. What they did was that they saw it suitable to go ahead and and put this out for competitive players. All right, and that's the next next thing that I want to talk about: the pitfalls and, and and downside of making a game that's geared toward competitive play over something that's geared toward something that everybody can go ahead and and and, and enjoy. All right, because the thing is that here's the thing about competitive play: these are the these are the few folks who are, who who are willing to go out of the way to spend extra for the better gear for the better for the better joysticks, um, they're the ones who are going to sit there and go through the, the, the boot camp of, of learning the ins and outs of all the frame data and tier rankings and everything else so that they can go off and they can, they can go into like tournaments and other things. And eSports has become a viable part of entertainment and marketing, and there's money to be there. Um, the problem with that, though, is that your general, your general consumership, the guys who will push this game into the multiple millions of copies being sold, all right, whether it be physical or digital copies, ninety over ninety five percent of them wouldn't give a fuck about where they're ranked online. Nope. You know, nope. But they went ahead. They were like, "Well, you know, hey." These guys who sit there and play versus all the time, you know, or play online play, they don't give a fuck about story mode. Even a lot of the majority of the guys who play, who, who do do that, guess what? They had something to fucking say. Mm-hmm. Look, here, here's the thing with Street Fighter Five. In its current state, I'm not purchasing it. No, not me either. And I'm I'm the biggest Street Fighter fan. <laughs> Yeah, you are probably the most the most rabid fucking Street Fighter fan that I know, all right? Because you've actually went ahead and come through every in each and every different fucking iteration to the iteration that's out there, all right? Um, you, know, you know, I yeah, just like a lot of kids uh, in middle school and high school and everything else, I knew about Street Fighter 2, but I fell off of 2D games um, at, at the end of the, late, of, of, the, of the 90s, all right? Um, and I came back to it just a little while ago when, you know, um, my buddy Cubot was uh, actually went ahead and he got me, guess what, what actually got me into it? He, he showed me, hey, look, with a few fucking components, you can go ahead and build your own, uh, your own joystick. In fact, probably the only reason why I pay attention to Street Fighter in general is because I built my own custom joysticks. Yes, he does. Yes, he has. And I need something to use them on. Okay. Otherwise, I might as well be playing fucking Guilty Gear. <laughs> All right. Look. There's always Mortal Kombat XL. <laughs> no. I would rather no. The thing is that Mortal Kombat, to tell you the truth, I'd rather play that on a on a PlayStation controller because okay. the controls will just work out better that way, and that and the fact that. You know, when during the time I was playing a lot of Mortal Kombat, it was on the Super Nintendo, and that that helps. You know, Mortal Kombat Two. Okay. Mortal Kombat Two. Okay. All right. (laughs) Um, just had to throw that out there. But (laughs) yeah, this here's you're you're gonna lose credibility if you didn't throw throw that out there. Okay, I'm gonna be really honest and say that I I really like playing Liu Kang on the first Mortal Kombat. But then again, it was really easy to play. So, and if you figured out the buffer thing, you can get 
instantaneous fucking fireballs and flying kicks. Uh, because well, you're putting the in the, version was, the Super Nintendo version was broken. Yeah, but you'd have to sit there and put in your commands like a half second earlier. Oh. <laughs> but okay, not about that. Here's the thing. All right. Generally speaking, for, for most people who sit there and go out of their way, they're like myself or Gray Mouse, who will, who will go out of their way and pick up a game, and they want to go ahead and take care of it on their own time. They may not want to go out of their way to join online play. All right? Because generally speaking, look, I, I, I've, I've heard stories from both yourself, Theme, and also other people about how they get hate mail and stupid, you know, the stupid 13-year-old kid who's sitting there on, on the mic uh, calling everybody, anybody and everybody online that they play against and lose against, either gay or a nigger. Um, you know, I just, no, I don't, I don't spend my, my recreational time and money to be, to be subject of that. Because right. of that, I don't do the multiplayer thing online. Guess what? At the time we made our first Street Fighter V video, I had a coupon from Green Man Gaming for 30% off. So I could have gotten it for as low as 37 bucks when the game was brand fucking new. Out. I didn't pick it up then, and I still haven't picked it up now. You know why? Because guess what? I still have the wherewithal to consider that it's not a complete fucking game. That I don't. <laughs> Done! It still needs to cook. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Come on, man. It doesn't make any sense. Especially this day and age, it doesn't make any fucking sense to come out with shit and you're still cooking the game. It's not done. A and one steak sauce is not going to help it. And the, and the funny thing is, is that obviously Capcom didn't have to sit there and go through all of these announcements and fucking apologies. If, if it would have sold well, you wouldn't have heard a peep from them. No, you wouldn't have. Right, they were expecting yeah. this to sell multiple millions of copies. They expected to sell as many as there are PlayStation Fours out there. Yep, that's or or people that are building PCs because it's only for PC and PS Four. But again, the problem with that is it, it, the history with Street Fighter Four, and then this game is not even fucking complete. So that was the that was the knife. That was the nail. People are like, okay, fuck that. I mean, people are already were like, okay, there's going to be a super version. There's going to be an ultra version anyway. And then when that was nixed, then they were like, okay, but I'm still not falling for it. What other, what other shit is going to be in there so that will prevent me from getting it? And that's why I held back too. Yep. I mean, there's a reason why Call of Duty will always have a campaign mode. <laughs> it no, matters. No, really, there's a reason why Call of Duty will always have a campaign mode. And now, wait a minute. Because you know, they eliminated the couch co-op, which yeah. doesn't really make any fucking sense. I mean, even, even at that point, you know, if it comes down to just selling copies of the game, they know if they, if they have a single-player experience on there, people will play. If they jump on, on the multiplayer and online play, that's completely up to them. I mean, you know... Uh, that's that's how I think it should be. What do you guys think? I remember I remember when you um, when we tried to play Godzilla, <laughs> and there was no versus mode. On there. <laughs> there was no whole versus mode. It, uh, God, it was just that's terrible. When you get a game, uh, okay, look. I don't understand how they figure that everybody is alone and they don't have anybody that will like to come by or they don't have anybody living with them in order to play the fucking game. I, I, I don't see that. And, and, and then you don't, oh, this motherfucker, no, they don't want to play offline by themselves. What? <laughs> to me, that just doesn't make any fucking sense as a gamer because I've been playing video games since I was two years old and Every game I played, unless it was mandatory for you to have another player like combat, I play alone. <laughs> combat didn't even give you an option. There was no computer playing against you. You had to have somebody else and blow each other the fuck up. Combat for the Atari. But other than that, oh, no. If I had to be connected online to play something like Centipede, that's a one-player game anyway, fuck you. 
Yeah, That's I mean, I, I remember, you know. Oh, wait, Akuma uh, said a true warrior enters the arena with all his power at the ready. Video games should take that fucking advice. Video game companies should take that advice and implement that shit to their games. Have shit ready, have shit with modes in it, and just variety, people, please. <laughs> what are your thoughts, Green Mouse? I know we've, we've been monopolizing time for a little bit. I'm just so passionate about Street Fighter, this just pisses me off. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Come on, Grave House. I, no, no, that doesn't work. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. I, I know so, I, I fucked around with about that earlier. You know, you know, I'm going to say this. If they do this with Darkstalkers, if another Darkstalkers comes out, if they do this with Rival Schools, if another Rival Schools come out, if they do this with another Power Stone and Power Stone, Rival Schools 3 and Power Stone please, 3, please, if you do that with those games, they come out, you will never hear the end of it from me. Never. Fuck you know, that. The- you know, the funny thing about, like, the announcement that they were taking direction toward completeness was um, in the same one, they were they said that one of the goals for Capcom going forward was to tap into its vast library of back titles. Oh, God. Okay. Let's, okay, you want to have one-player shit? Make, a, make another Ghosts and Goblins in. A two-player Ghosts and Goblins? Hmm. <laughs> Bring back the 1940 series back. Mars Matrix, Giga Wing. Bring them shits back. And don't fucking make them one player. Ha- Gah. If you're going to dig in your library, you better do this right. And you better have modes for these fucking games that come out. Here, here's a funny thing. All right. Um, like I said, I, and Grey Mouse mentioned this, I think their focus was to sit there and, and um, push something out so people would have time to expose themselves to the game before evo this year but in hopes to go ahead and actually encourage the people the few thousand people that they um that would go out of their way to uh to actually attend and play uh tournament on the tournament scene they really ended up neglecting the millions of casual gamers that would have picked up their game otherwise all right and here's the truth about that is that if If a gamer doesn't see anything in a title that appeals to them, even if the game is free, they're not going to pick it up. Right. Case in point, Tekken Retribution was a free game on on PlayStation Network. (laughs) He knows this. I downloaded it. I waited the the 10 minutes for the the four, excuse me, the, 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 the six gigabyte download to go ahead and finish up. Um, Theory was sitting there with us. We wanted to to go ahead and try it out, you know, versus, and it turned out that there's no couch versus on it. <laughs> I deleted that fucking thing. I was right 30 there. Seconds. It was gone. It's a free Theory, game. I Theory was, and I were right there when Rever deleted that off the screen. Yes, three. It was hilarious. <laughs> and it's a free fucking game too. It was not going to occupy any hard drive space. No fucking system. No, it just made no fucking sense. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think companies. And this just doesn't go to Capcom, but companies in general have to keep in mind that if they want to keep their doors open, they want to stay profitable. And every company is like that. Every it doesn't matter if it's if it's video games, tiddlywinks, or fast food. You want to turn a profit. Um, yeah. You have to worry about accommodating as many consumers and customers as possible. And when you make a game that's, it doesn't matter if they're, you know, it's focused on the competitive community. If you do that at the expense of ostracizing everybody else who might even look in the direction of your game, then you're going to end up like Capcom, having your CEO out, apologizing for the state of your fucking game, and then announcing to everybody who's completely lost faith in your fucking company that we are taking a brand new direction. Who's right there in front of you? 
<laughs> Any Great final thoughts? thoughts? Any final thoughts, gentlemen? No, I've I've said my piece. <laughs> well, I just want to say this: that um, just to cover all bases, um, some people might think that. Street Fighter V's um, numbers are low because it didn't go on the, uh, the Xbox One. Um, so I want to nip that in the bud right away because PlayStation 4 has 40 million consoles that are, that are somewhere in this world. They're not and there are, but it wasn't the PS4 exclusive. It was also on the PC. Yeah, and there are hundreds of millions of Steam subscribers out there. It, that if y'all would have let me finish, I was I was going to mention that. But go, uh, go, man, go, man, go ahead. Guys, uh, just, go, man. I mean, you, you guys pretty much said everything I was going to say anyway. Um, so, in conclusion, there's a there's better games out there than Street Fighter V at its current state, and there's better games that are coming out very soon that. That, namely, uh, King of Fighters uh, 14 will be. Are you sure? It has an arcade mode. Yes, it has. Well, 50. No, it has an, 12 and it has an arcade mode. Hey, so the King of Fighters 12. I'm just saying it has 50 characters. King of Fighters 12 was all time attack. What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about. I'm talking about King of Fighters 14 right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's already have. And Tekken 7. Well, Tekken Retribution didn't have a versus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> For Cap oh, they need to fix and keep going with the variety or else because this is just unacceptable. For Capcom to go to send out a PR message saying this is our new direction. What? It just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, I understand. I don't think that's going to help their case, um, especially still that there's no arcade mode after three months of it being out on the street, or longer, actually. I think five months now. Look, look, Capcom, you don't want to get a Hillary Clinton reputation. Please do not sink that low when you can't fucking be trusted at all in gaming don't especially with your number one franchise ever street fighter i think it's their number one i mean there's resident evil there's mega man and, and mega man really doesn't exist anymore and resident evil is oh come on <laughs> anything else green mouse yeah i i think I think you folks could go ahead and figure out exactly where our thoughts are. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad. And we wouldn't be upset if there was – a lot of this stuff would be more forgivable if we were actually given good, complete games. And that's how it is. Um, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, it's going to be a short week because real life happens. Um, you know, uh, like I say at the end of every video, if you're so kind – Hit like, hit subscribe, check out our channels. Gray Mouse has a channel. Theme has a channel. I have a channel. Um, we put up stuff every week. You know, tune in, check us out, get our own little special sauce and our special flavors of social commentary. You know, we're always glad to, to do that. And if we missed anything, we encourage you to leave comments, please. Do so. Uh, with that, uh, we are the three middle-aged guys. The bullshit on this topic ends here. I am the Reverend. The theme here. And Gray Mouse One. Once again, for the benefits of common sense, logic, and complete fucking games, if you actually come out with complete fucking games, just do that shit. Un just unforgivable, damn it. <sighs> Credits. You know, I'd like to take the time out to announce that three middle-aged guys are going to go on a new direction. We're going to emphasize sensitivity, tolerance, and inclusiveness in our videos.
our safety space can be found right here. <laughs>